In tonight's video, I talk about how to track your macros when you work overnight shifts. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and tonight I'm doing an impromptu video. That's right, I said tonight because it is 1 in the morning on Tuesday night. About to be Wednesday morning. But I made a mistake tonight, a tactical error on my computer when I was working, my Windows computer. It was acting a little funny. Pictures weren't loading in some of my email, like client pictures, and I thought all right, maybe there's an update that needs to be run. Something's not running right. I went in. Sure enough, there was an update I needed to restart for. Went in and ran it. An hour later, and the update is still running. So I started going through some of the uh, comments on my YouTube videos. And I got a question uh, from someone. And it's a question that I get quite frequently. And I thought, ah, that's a great video topic. So why not, while I can't do anything, while I'm paralyzed here, uh, let's let's be productive and I'll get this video edited and out on Wednesday morning afternoon sometime um, can't be too loud everyone's asleep in my house including my two-year-old son but I am going to uh, get my point across to you guys so the, the topic I want to discuss as you know by the title of the video I'm not trying to be sneaky here is just how to you track your macros or how do you hit your daily goals if you do shift work or if your day falls in very odd hours meaning some people will work like a 14 hour shift uh, overnight and then come home and then they're tired and then they, they train before they go to work there's all these kind of odd variables that can take place for those to do shift work uh, my father was a firefighter for 31 years so I'm very familiar with shift work um, he would work 24 hours at a time. Of course, at a fire department, you have the luxury of a kitchen all the time. You know, I have clients in Australia that work in, in the mining industry, <clears throat> so they um, they work very hard. I have a client in Texas, Sean, who worked in the oil industry. So these types of situations can require some flexibility and also some creativity when it comes to hitting your macronutrient goals. First things first. There's no rule that says macros have to be hit within a 24 hour window. We can expand that into a 48 hour window, right? Especially for people that are working and aren't able to sit down and have a meal during their day, right? During their 24 hour window. The first rule of thumb that I like to do, especially when I travel or when I know that my day is going to be out of whack, is I like to just look at the day in blocks of time. So the nice thing about what I do is I eat every four to six hours so I basically know every four to six hours what I'm going to eat. Now for those that do shift work you can do something similar. You can keep something easy on you to have protein bars, beef jerky, to just get you through those longer periods of time where you might not be able to have a, a meal and you can keep track of your macros that you've had. Then when you get done with your shift and you can have a more substantial meal then you can load up on some more carbohydrates and fats the most difficult thing that I find is getting your protein in during those long shifts of not being able to eat and that's where things like uh, jerky, whey protein, uh, RTDs or uh, ready to drink protein shakes and um, you know protein bars, quest bars, things like this things that are kind of non-perishable, don't require refrigeration, uh, can become very helpful in uh, maintaining your you know, anabolic state during this 24-hour window. <clears throat> Another thing to consider is what I stated earlier was the 48-hour window. So instead of just trying to get all your calories in in that 24-hour window and you feel like you're stuffing yourself at short periods of time, instead you can just extend that to a 48 hour window so if you're a little low one day you can be a little higher the next you can also make it a 72 hour window right flexibility is the key here 
We're not looking for perfection each day. I think a lot of people get caught up in the idea that like each day has to be perfect on its own. I don't believe that's the case. Consistency over long term is much more important. And so sometimes people will get caught up in like if I don't have a perfect day, then they just throw the fuck it approach in there and they say if I didn't have a perfect day, it doesn't even matter what I do. I'll start over tomorrow or I'll start over Monday, which doesn't need to happen. If you have a bad day or if you have a good day but you aren't able to eat enough, use the next day. Use three days. If you go way over on fat on one day because you had an event, use the next four or five days to reduce fat evenly and not have such a drastic big drop up and down increase and drops, right? It's all about consistency. It's not about being perfect every day. Now, for those that are in contest prep and you're very lean, uh, it can require a bit more diligence on your part to plan ahead. Plan your meals, pack your meals, cook all your meals for a four or five day period. If you're doing shift work, store them in a six pack cooler bag, store them in a cooler, whatever your situation is. When you get to a low body fat level, your body is going to become more run down, you're going to be more irritable, you're going to get more hunger, and it's going to impact you more negatively than if you have a little bit more body fat. So we're dealing with two different types of scenarios here, but I just wanted to bring up the point that if you're in contest prep or if you're very low body fat, it may require a little more diligence and you might not have the ability to skip eating for six, eight, or ten hours. This is another, another case where intermittent fasting could be of benefit. If it's easier for you to fast because of your work, because of your lifestyle, and fit all your meals in in a short period of time, a few days a week, or however it may be, I'm all for that. Again, what I'm looking for, what I'm trying to preach, what I believe in, it's all about consistency, right? It's not about being perfect, it's about being consistent over the long term. There is a time and a place to try to be as perfect as possible, but you have to look at each individual situation and decide what is best for you, what is sustainable, what is going to give you a win. It's very important that you get a win each day, that you set up your day and you succeed and you build momentum on that. If you feel like you're failing all the time, that's going to beat you down, okay? You're going to eventually run out of momentum, you're going to run out of motivation, and you're going to have no more self-control because you don't feel like you're succeeding. Set yourself up for success. Set your diet up to have real, long-term, successful opportunities. Don't set up an ideal diet that you feel like is perfect, but it's not something that's realistic that you're going to be able to stick to. Don't get hung up on, I'm awake for 18 hours, I sleep for 6, where do I eat? Try to just focus on the daily rituals that are going to give you the best results, and uh, I think you'll have a lot of success for that. <clears throat> I think flexible dieting is highly beneficial specifically for these situations, and learning how to just track what you're eating on a meal-to-meal -meal basis and having that data and you can provide yourself the best opportunity to make progress when you don't have the ideal situation of being able to eat every three, four, five hours in a office like some people have or if you work from home like myself. There are times when, uh, you know, I'm not able to follow my day-to-day -day life when I travel, things like this, but I'm very comfortable at this point with nutrition having tracked macros for so long, having tracked my diet. <clears throat> anyway guys, sorry for the informality of the video, uh, sorry for the change in scenery, hopefully it doesn't bother you too much, but I did want to get a video out tomorrow, not sure when I was going to have time to do that. My computer just rebooted, okay, so I'm going to go back in and get some client work done, and I appreciate you watching, I hope you liked my day in the life video and my my video from Las Vegas. Uh, I really enjoy putting out the content. I'm loving the subscribers, so thank you guys for all your comments and for all the subscribers that I've gained. If you're interested, I do use Snapchat. Now, the Snapchat is not something that I consider fitness related at all. It's more of a lifestyle thing. I don't really have any pattern to it. 
It's uh, at Paul Ravella, the same as my Instagram. But literally, I just shoot pictures of my pets, my son, my wife, my computer, my car, the, the groceries, whatever it is that I'm doing. And I think, oh, this is a funny moment. But I don't actually want to make it a formal post on like Instagram or Facebook. That's kind of what I've taken away from Snapchat. It's just this informal kind of exchange of information. And I like to go in and look at the people that I follow, just, you know, random posts and pictures and comments. And um, I was actually able to catch up with a few of my clients going into their Snapchat and seeing where they were. So I do find it handy. I am getting a little better at it. I'm still a very basic, basic old white guy on Snapchat checking in. Anyway, guys, if you're doing cardio, uh, keep up the great work. It's, uh, it's funny, I've had a lot of people tell me they use these videos for cardio. And I shouldn't be surprised because when I was doing cardio for my last contest prep, I got quite good at saving videos that I enjoy specifically for my cardio sessions. So YouTube channels that I liked um, got viewed and listened to while I was doing cardio. Helped the time go by. Anyway, guys, uh, have a great week. Have a great Wednesday. If you're watching this video, it's Wednesday. Unless you're in Australia, and then it's going to be like late Wednesday, maybe Thursday. This is Paul from ProPhysique.com. Thank you for watching.